Thank you very much, Klaus, for the kind introduction. And yeah, welcome everyone to this uh, lightning talk or the Munich C++ user group event in June. Yeah, as uh, Klaus mentioned, um, this talk is a bit about uh, teaching software engineering. So besides my actual research here at the chair, uh, I created a course about teaching software engineering to students. And this is due to my both industry and academia background. I realized that yeah, students work somehow or write software somehow differently that I yeah, was used to or I expected it to be from, from my time in industry. And yeah, as part of this, I decided to create a course that yeah, brings this the way of how software engineering works in industry closer to the students so that they can wrap up these concepts already during their studies so that they are able to apply them in their further projects at the university so they can have a faster ramp up uh, when they start in industry. And besides from creating this course, we also uh, published a paper um, at the ICSE, the International Conference and Software Engineering. And basically this is uh, a summary of the content we presented there. So, yeah. Um, yeah, how is, yeah, programming handled at universities, usually. So we have individual assignments because we have some students or we have to grade students in a way. So they all get somehow individual assignments. Everyone gets the same assignment. And the main focus is on completing this task because we have to grade them. So everything is somehow focused on don't share your things. You have to complete your task. And yeah, once you have completed the task successfully, you basically throw away the code. So it's a, a short lifetime. Uh, and the, the maximum lifetime possible is, of course, one semester, but usually it's even smaller. And yeah, there's usually just a single contributor or at most a few students that are working together on a code, but also very much predefined. So there are not really really much places for collaboration. However, in industry, the story is different. You all know there you're interested in creating uh, a code base that is able to last over years or, or even decades. And this software needs to be maintained. Yeah, Once you, you wrote it, you don't want to throw it away. You want to keep things running over time. And even the, the number of contributors is much larger. You have you have large teams, you're working usually in an agile uh, way, and also the contributors change over time. So some old colleagues leave, new colleagues show up. So these are all things that usually are not present in university. So our goal was to, to raise this awareness of time and change for the students. So they should at least get a first idea, what does it mean to write code that I don't write just for myself, but also I write it that some other people can read it and can understand it, work with it, uh, have an easy setup. And so we created this course to give the students a first introduction about some techniques that are used in software engineering to make the life for the reader easier, right? Not just for yourself, but also for other people. Now for this, we started with a first definition of actually what is programming and what is software engineering. And here uh, I rely on the, the book of Titus Winters, uh, which we also managed to have uh, in our lecture yesterday for a guest talk. So he also liked the, the things we're doing in our course. And here we follow this definition that programming is something what students mainly were used to do. They were sitting down and producing some code. And now we want to raise them the awareness that software engineering extends the idea of programming, the sitting down and writing code, to also include maintenance uh, of that code for a certain time and scale. So if the number of users scales, your software has to handle this. Now, since we created a course, how is the structure of this course? So the idea is 
that we have a few lectures, in total five lectures, where we introduce a new concept. And right after the lecture, over a period of two weeks, the students uh, get a practical homework assignment where, where they can apply these concepts right away. But other than yeah, where you have your assignment, you submit the assignment and basically throw away the code, we try, we try that all these assignments contribute to a single code base. So the task of the students is that they maintain the entire code base for the entire semester. So at least for three months, the students are responsible for maintaining their own code base. Now, what kind of students do we have? Our idea was we wanted to give the students these concepts as early as possible. So we don't want to do any late master course where the students take the course and then leave university, but we wanted to do this as early as possible. So we have we expect undergraduate students with just a first idea about programming. And yeah, since this is part of the uh, electrical and computer engineering department, in our case, the students have a basic C course, so a basic C experience. And based on that, we do this course at the example of C++. And now the starting point in our course is that, that the students get a GitLab repository with an initial code base and with the story, so the bus factor, factor hit, all developers somehow disappeared and they left the code base in a somehow working state, but without a build system, without tests or any documentation. And now the job of the students is to work on this code base, to understand it, to improve it, and to maintain it over the time of the semester. Now, and as part of the five lectures, we introduce them the these five uh, concepts. So in the first lecture, we start with create a build system for this empty code base. So first make it compile and do this in a collaborative way. So use the version control system. They are not allowed to directly contribute to the master branch. They have to do everything via feature branches. So we want to get them to get used into this collaborative workflow. We also require code reviews. So just they want should get started with the system, make it compile. And the next step, once they are able to compile it, we talk a bit about unit testing. And since programming is already quite new to students, we also don't want to overwhelm them with a rich feature set of test frameworks. So we start introducing use unit testing at a very simple, um, simple way. So we just say them, if I want to write a unit test as simple as possible, I just write myself a function with a third statement at the end. So then students start creating tests using really just simple assert statements. Then over time, they refactor it to using some test frameworks. We also want to implement some new features. For this, we introduce them test-driven development to see how they can make use of the tests. And then in the fourth lecture, we talk about a very uh, important concept or some important concepts to keep uh, a code base alive, which is something to ensure that we have consistency. And for this, we, we address several things like a CI, some code formatters, some, some static code analysis, some coding guidelines. So things how you can automatically uh, have a consistent code base. And at the very end, we apply all those concepts um, by introducing the students a very basic set uh, of the object-oriented programming part of C++. So, so far, we did everything in C++, but just using three functions, so relying on their basic C experience. And in the very last lecture, we apply all the tests the students have written so far all the tooling they have set up to yeah, refactor their code base from a free function based approach to some object oriented functionality. And at the end, we show again some real world examples to give them an idea, okay, this is really used outside in open source projects in the industry. And 
yeah, as I said, these lectures introduce the new concepts and besides we have some live demonstrations to really show the students how this is applied and right after the lecture the students uh, get these homework tasks where they can yeah apply all those concepts right away so as i said set up your build system write your tests and refactor the code base so change is the main part of the lecture, how to do the changes that they don't hurt that much. Now, since we are a lecture, we want to evaluate these things somehow. So usually we, we have this evaluation of the homework assignments for the entire team. The team is two to three students. And at the end, we have a final exam evaluated per student to somehow yeah, filter out students that just benefited of their team. Now, for the final exam, we, we um, have three main groups uh, of questions or so some general questions to see if they understood the concepts. Then we do some, some code review. Students get some code from us and then, yeah, write some suggestions as you would do a code review. And at the very end, they have to do some implementation. This is mainly about writing tests and also writing verbal tests. So since we do this on paper, uh, we cannot really expect that they're writing good and valid code. Now, since we also wanted to do the management of the course in a somehow scalable way so that we don't have to spend that much time, we, we also investigated somehow how, what things can we automate to make our lives as a, a lecturer um, easier. So for this, we heavily rely on uh, plain text format. So for instance, as I uh, provided these slides here, they are uh, markdown based. We also use ASCII docs for some documentation so that everything can be integrated in our version control system. And thanks to this uh, plain text format, we can also parse um, information we have in these documents to automatically create uh, for instance, the new homework assignments um, and provide them to the students as GitLab issues rather than uploading some, some PDFs uh, to, to a website. So we really want to get the students into this uh, version control development workflow. Now, yeah, as I said, we have uh, decided for this um set up to have really everything in our code base so also the slides the documents that we can generate things even from our documentation materials um, we can even remove the solution or we can create the the code we provide to the students from our code that contains the solutions we can create the repositories we can add the students to this project everything works uh, based on our tooling we, we wrote, so just to make our lives easier. And yeah, then we evaluate, also created a framework to evaluate the submissions of the students. So we define some KPIs and basically want to automatically evaluate these KPIs. So for instance, do all the tests the students write pass? Um, is the code formatted? Do they have a certain amount of code coverage? Are the tests robust? So if we change some uh, floating point values, do the tests fail? So do they basically cover some things? And besides, we do some uh, manual review to identify some code smells. Now, in the end, this semester is the third time that I give this course. And what did we learn so far from giving this course? The, the three main things we could observe is one thing, of course, expressive naming. So it seems that students often have problems in writing or giving good names to variables or commit messages. Independently how often we mention this, we often get commit messages like test or, or variable names like variable and yeah. There we are still fighting uh, on, on finding a good way how to, to improve this. So I'm, I'm very open for any suggestions from you guys. 
Then the second thing, um, in particular for TDD, it feels like that students testing is rather new to them. So they are somehow unsure what to test. So if I tell them, write me a solution for this, they sit down and write me some code and it somehow works. But if I ask them to write tests for their own code, they are somehow unsure what they actually want to test. So which input should I really use to test this? And the last thing is the integration. So although, um, yeah, we tell them integrate as often as possible to, to get rid of some merge conflicts, all this stuff, they somehow tend to submit always five minutes before the deadline in one single huge PR. So this is a, a, a third big part where we are currently working on to, to get this concept, these ideas better to the students. Okay, that's it. Um, thank you for, for listening. I'm very open for any questions or suggestions to improve this course. Here on the, um, on the links, you find the teaching tools I mentioned we wrote and also a template for, for the slides we use here. So thank you so much. All right, thank you very much. Uh, and I can personally say that I feel this is a great improvement to my time, which <laughs> so some people also wrote in the chat, uh, in my time, programming was not taught at all. Not, not at all, so it was your job. Uh, and so indeed, I, I know a couple of computer science students in my time that actually passed computer science without being able to write code at all. So I really feel this is uh, going in the right direction. Now, uh, there is a lot of questions actually in the chat, unfortunately many more that we can, um, that I can probably give to you. So I'm now selecting a few. Um, so first, CPPL, ask something that probably a few people now uh, think. Your take on the op uh, opinion that teaching C before C++ may not necessarily be a good idea. So what's your, what's your take on that? No, actually, it's uh, it makes sense. So we just grabbed on this thing that in the very first semester in, in our department, students start with a C course. That somehow fixed in the in, in the schedule of the entire course so we cannot really change that but i don't wanted to create a course that somehow uh yeah does just more things on c so since my main language is c plus plus as well i wanted to to use c plus plus so i thought okay with basic c experience students can do the switch to c plus plus but to make the transition more easy we start with keeping using free functions so basically as they know it from c and just at the very end we we introduce the, a tiny piece of object oriented programming all right <laughs> then um it really sounds like you invest a lot of time by doing manual reviews so you and you probably a couple of your colleagues this really sounds like a lot of work how many students can join this course so uh, is it many or is it just a few? Um, so right now we have about uh, 30 uh, in every semester. So in the very first, uh, uh, we had uh, 15 that took the final exam and the entire course. But now for the second and third time, we have about 30 uh, students. And yeah, as I mentioned, with this KPI framework, we are able to to evaluate most of the code and then this framework also creates some some diff patches so i can really go easy through the 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 code the students wrote so i can get a kind of overview what their changes are so even if i do the the manual code review i can do the evaluation for every homework in roughly two to three hours so and then it's okay three hours for, for every homework, so it's acceptable. Acceptable, which you might actually do more reviews than people in a, in a company. I know that reviews are very often just <laughs> done in a five minute way, so oh, it looks good, uh, which is definitely not what it should be. All right, as I said, there's many more questions, but um, since we are kind of at the end of the time, I say thank you very much. This was great.